Yo, yo, yo. What it do, my peoples? What's going on? Happy Tuesday. Yo, soup. I'm really sorry if you're not feeling very well. That sucks, man. <clears throat> that sucks. But I'll still blame Suicide Squad. <laughs> I hope everybody's doing okay, man. Super, I hope you start feeling better. Shout out to my dad. My dad got me a new coffee mug, you know, repping them stars, you know. Stars. Pops got me a new coffee mug. Or my parents did. I say my dad because my dad likes to buy stuff online. <laughs> yeah. The servers went down again. Yo, we'll talk about it. Let's pull up an article this morning. We'll pull up an article about it this morning. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about it this morning, man. Uh, we got video gaming news for January 30th, baby. And then, and then we got more Pal World. Hopefully, with Pals acting right, because yesterday was brutal. Dude, the game was a hot, buggy mess. I don't know what was going on. It was a mess, dude. The game all the way around was just screwed up, dude. All the pals were like jacked. Uh, half of them were like following me around and not doing what they were supposed to be doing. Um, I was falling through the environment constantly. There was like, there was a lot of wonky stuff going on. It, it felt terrible. The game felt terrible yesterday. Uh, but the game overall is a banger, dude, and I'm loving it. So we'll keep pushing. Hopefully today just feels better. But we can't get to playing Power World until we uh, get through video gaming news for today. So let's get over there and uh, see what we got going on in the world of video gaming news for today. Let's go, baby. Let's do it. We vibing. We vi we, vi we, 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 we vibing, vibing. End of January each month. Each month brings us closer to GTA 6 and the year of 2032. That's right, dude. That's right. Every month that passes is another month closer to uh, the release of uh, GTA 6 in 2032. You're right. You're right, buddy. Yeah. That's a lot of counting down to do, but, you know. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. Yo, uh, here we go, man. Embracer is at it again. Again. What a terrible flipping company, dude. <laughs> Here it is, dude. We didn't even need to. Embracer? Embracer is just. Oof, boy. Yeah, dude. They they are they are overcooking, dude. They are overcooking, I I think is the, would be the more appropriate term. Yeah, they're 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 past being cooked, dude. They're getting charred, dude. They're getting charred up. Yeah, so we didn't even need to pull up a, a different uh, tab to look at the uh, Rocksteady stuff. Uh, yeah. You know what's funny, too? Yo. What? <laughs> In 2032, that's so funny. Bro, to be here before we know it. You know, the, you know what's crazy? It does seem, you know, that's like eight years, right? It seems like a long time. Dog, it'll be here before we know it. Time flies, dude. Time flies. I'm telling you, time flies so fast. So crazy, dude. So crazy. It is a long time though. Yeah. Yeah, I know, dude. No, I don't want it to be here. I don't want it to be here. I like uh, I like to try and enjoy the 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 moment, you know. I'm not looking for 
You know, I'm not living the way Soup is. Soup's like, I just need 2025, bro. I just need it. I need time to go by fast so I can get GTA 6. <laughs> I'm living in the moment, baby. I'm enjoying what I got. <laughs> I've, been, I've been in Los Santos for a decade. Yeah, dude. I get it. I know you're hyped, bro. I'm just messing with you. I know you're hyped up. I know you're hyped up. I get it. There are a lot of people that are already living in in the future, bro. There, there's You're not the only one. There are a lot of people that are already living in 2025. They're like, bring it, son. I'm ready for 2024 to be over already. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's funny, Soup. That's funny, dude. They have no idea. <laughs> You're like, only 11 more months. But what's funny is you don't even know if, like, it's going to, what what the actual release date is. It could be, it could be another flipping 17, 18 more months, you know? Quite possibly. <laughs> you, you, the window's 2025, but that's still, that's a 12-month window too, dude. <laughs> oh, man. And then you got to account for all the delays it's going to have, you know? I'm just playing, dude. I don't want that to happen to you. I don't want that to happen to you. <laughs> You're funny, dude. You're funny, man. Um, here's what's funny. We've talked about this a little bit. You know, Warner Brothers is is all about this uh, pivot into, like, the majority of their games being games as a service. Well, look what's happening with, uh, you know, <laughs> Suicide Squad already. <laughs> You know, so it's probably not a real good indicator as to how well they're going to do with their uh, live service games moving forward. You know, I was telling everybody to be careful about uh, Suicide Squad in the first place. So um, for all those people that bought into what they did uh, with this game of baiting people to buy in early, um, as much as I prompt people to not get suckered into the premise of deluxe editions that give you three days early access and really make you a final beta tester. I'm sorry. I tried to warn you, you know, I tried to warn everybody. There's no, you know, this is a, this is a terrible, uh, scummy mechanic that they, you know, the, the industry as a whole, a lot of these big companies try to sucker people into and this is what happens quite often so feels bad for everybody that bought into it but and i hate to do this but i told you so <laughs> i told you so i mean i hate to be that guy i really don't want games to ever be bad but that's not the reality we live in man <laughs> Mm. So, we'll talk about this. We'll see what else we got. Yeah, this feels bad. There's a lot of uh, Deus Ex uh, uh, fans out there, and we haven't had another. We haven't had a Deus Ex game in a long time. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Perfect soup. Perfect, dude. <laughs> Bro, I haven't had anybody use that in a while. <laughs> yeah, dude, I haven't had anybody use that emote in a while. That's a good one, dude. Pinky made that one for us. That's a that's a fantastic emote, dude. That's a really good emote. Pinky killed that one. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, so this feels bad. Well, we got it up. We'll talk about it. I mean, look, dude. It, I think that. Anybody that's a fan of any game being made by any developer that is a subsidiary of Embracer, you should just brace for the worst. Prepare for the worst, dude. Because Embracer is going down the drain. And they're taking every subsidiary with them. It's terrible. <clears throat> Wait, what? <laughs> Man, get every month till December. Yeah. 
Oh, man. Step it up. We vibing this morning. Two games that I think everybody should be staying away from. I've been very uh, openly vocal and uh, telling, uh, trying to educate people about why they should stay away from both these games until reviews come out. Yep. Step it up. We've got that up. Nintendo Switch to win. 2032. <laughs> Yo, the original Dragon Quest Builders is finally coming to PC next month. Interesting. Twenty hardest games for Super Nintendo. Yeah, we see those kind of articles a lot. I don't, I don't normally dive into those because those are, are not really news per se, you know? And quite often it's it's a, you know, you can do surveys on that kind of stuff and you'll get a nice baseline for what a consensus populace will, will you know, view as some of the tougher games. I'll say this as a whole. I think games back then... I think games back then in that era of gaming development were made harder. I think gamers were better at playing tougher games back then than they are nowadays. I think games nowadays are made for a softer gaming generation. I'll I'll be quite honest with you. If you go look at like the 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 um era of like Sega Genesis Original Nintendo, right? Uh, NES and Super Nintendo, stuff like that. Do games that were made back then were quite often incredibly difficult, incredibly difficult. And um, as we've moved forward in gaming, I think that uh, games have gotten, and not as a whole. There are, I mean, as a whole, I think they've gotten softer and softer. But there, there are still outliers, right? There are still games that are being made that are incredibly difficult, like the Soulsborne games and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong. There are still incredibly difficult games being made. But as a whole, I think games generally are made softer than, than they were back then. Absolutely. And I don't think there's any denying it at all. <clears throat> If you go back and play like those those games from from back in that generation of gaming, they were made incredibly difficult. New Nintendo 64 inspired game free for everyone. Let's see what this is. <clears throat> Fan favorite game removed from Steam for uh, with no warning. We'll see what that's about. Also. Yeah, we've talked about Enshrouded a little bit. We could pull that up, too. Uh, we'll see what the ratings are for it. Let's go ahead and take a quick peek at it. How about it? We've seen a little bit on the day it released. Very positive right now. 84%. Over 14,000 reviews. I think this game would have probably somewhere around... seven to 10,000 more reviews at this point. Way more sales. This game would probably have way, 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 way more sales right now if it wasn't for Pal World. Pal World um, is another base building, open world survival crafting game that has completely overshadowed the release of Enshrouded. Um, so it looks like this game's doing pretty well. It's early access also. It's a multiplayer game. And it looks very good, but Pal World has just overshadowed it completely. So uh, the fact that it's got over 14,000 reviews right now is great. What's Pal World sitting at? Review wise, 
145,000 reviews now. God dang, dude. So, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> there would probably be a, a large number of reviews and m many more purchases even for uh, Enshrouded had Power World not hit when it did, you know? So, people will still, people that love this genre will, will still go and, and try out Enshrouded at some point, just probably not nearly as quickly as they would have had Power World not been around. <clears throat> Walkstar? What's Walkstar? Oh. Wait, I don't have a... Oh, there it is. Oh. <laughs> Bro. Flipping soup, dude. God dang it, Doug. <laughs> That's flipping funny, bro. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, Jesus. That's funny, Doc. <laughs> That's really good, dude. I love it, bro. <laughs> You're just, there's nothing else. There's nothing else. I love how, like, there's an entire year left before uh, there's even the chance of GTA 6 hitting. <laughs> and Soup cares for none of it, dude. He's like, I'm having none of it, dude. I just, I just want 2025 to be here. <laughs> oh, man. It's so funny, dude. PlayStation fans can't contain their excitement for the upcoming state of play. We talked about this yesterday. There's potentially a state of play coming. Uh, they've talked about it maybe being tomorrow. We'll find out. We'll try to see if we can find out definitively today when the uh, the state of play is happening. If it is tomorrow, we're going to miss it live because uh, tomorrow's our normal day off for the stream, right? Um, I take one day off a week. It's always on Wednesdays. And uh, we'll have to recap it whenever I get back if that's the case. But we'll see. We'll see. Day of the dev stuff popping off. That's really funny, dude. I like that. Okay, we'll take a peek at this. We usually watch Day of the Devs uh, showcase every year, so... And then Shrouded is an indie game as well, so that's great. We talked about this already. Come on, Rockstar. <laughs> oh, Rocksteady. Love it, dude. You have a calendar full. Yeah, yeah. I figured you did. I'm the same way, dude. Obviously, you know, we've got our schedule. And uh, I was looking at it yesterday. Let's take a quick peek real quick. So, obviously, I still need to finish Fallout New Vegas. Uh, but Alan Lake 2 is done because of a soft lock. Uh, that game was balls anyways. I did not like Alan Lake 2, dude. Baldur's Gate 3, awesome, loved that game, it was so good, uh, awesome, we finished it twice actually, <clears throat> in uh, the same playthrough, but we did uh, two different endings because we wanted to get the epilogue, so uh, that was awesome, and we still need to finish Fallout New Vegas, which has uh, come over through last year. Now, obviously, I had Enshrouded on the, uh, and Pal World is something that we had been watching for a long time, so Pal World came out, we're playing that right now, so that's got to be put on the schedule, I'll be getting definite, like... I'll be fleshing this out a little bit better. But Prince of Persia, that game was supposed to be pretty good. But I just, I decided not to go ahead and jump in on that. And Shrouded is looking pretty good too. I'm just too caught up in Power World right now. 
Uh, I think I'm going to start playing the Outer Worlds at the beginning of February. But there's a lot of stuff hitting in February as well, right? So, uh, Sons of the Forest full release hits at the end of February. Uh, so we're probably going to play that. We'll probably do Sons of the Forest all the way up until Unicorn Overlord. Because I'm definitely playing Unicorn Overlord. And then Dragon's Dogma 2 is going to be big for me as well. And then um, I've got a vacation coming up in mid-April. So um, we'll play that all the way until that point. Now, the other things coming out in February that are worth maybe noting. Like Helldivers 2 is worth taking a look at. See how that's going to be. Nightingale comes out on the 22nd as well. Um, I, that's a game that looks like it's got a lot of promise. It's very interesting. Um, so we'll keep track. Fight Crab 2 just looks like fun. Early access on February 13th. The Thermaturge looks very good as well. Banisher's Ghost of New Eden also could be good. So we've got a lot we're keeping track of, right? <clears throat> Alone in the Dark. Yeah, is that one you're looking forward to? A lot of those kinds of games I save for Scaretober for us. You can see, like, Scaretober is where I usually get a lot of those kinds of games in. And these are all the other, like, 2024 release games that don't have definitive dates yet. We're kind of waiting on to see. One second. All right, sorry. Yeah, we took a look at Grand Blue Fantasy uh, yesterday. It looks decent, dude. It looks decent. Yep. Uh, some of the ones that uh, kind of Zenless Zone Zero, you know, interested in that as well as um, in that same kind of genre, right? Zenless Zone Zero, Suicide Squad, bleh! Um, and then Blue Protocol. Blue Protocol as well, one that I'm interested in checking out, you know, so... Um, we just need release dates for a lot of these games to find out when we're going to try to throw them into the schedule, you know, but I've got a lot we're looking forward to for sure. <laughs> Don't make me throw up, dude. Uh huh. Yep. Digital Trends got an early copy. Waiting on a review code for Suicide Squad Kill Just League. Here's why we recommend waiting to spend your cash till we have time to review it. Where is this? They still haven't received a code, yeah. There are only a few uh, a few outlets that got their hands on early copies to like kind of review. And most of the reviews that came out were mediocre at best for the game. They were not very good. And um that's probably why they haven't given out uh, code review codes for the game to other outlets. You know? They don't want people to hear what the game is actually playing like. They want people to buy into the marketing ploy of the trailers they're showing and stuff rather than people hearing what the game actually feels like because that's going to kill their sales. So, uh... Don't buy into this game on release, okay? Heed my advice. I've been talking about this for roughly a year now. This is not a game you should be buying on release. It's a game you should be waiting on reviews for. Uh, let's make sure we got all the info for this state of play when this is happening. What? <laughs> what? 
A gamer finds Steam's logo in an unlikely spot when they notice a local church's sign using the online store's iconic branding. Shut up, dude. That's hilarious. Gamer church, dude. Let's go. <laughs> For all the gamer gods, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's perfect. Aren't our are NFT games gambling? Absolutely. I wouldn't even say it's gambling. You're just basically giving your money away. Yeah, Power World uh, got their Xbox versions uh, up to version 1.1.2, but the PC parody is still far off. We'll take a peek at that. <laughs> hey, dude, truth hurts, though. Truth hurts, man. Look, I've talked about my sentiments with in regards to, like, blockchain, Web3, NFT, uh, you know, crypto-based economies and games and stuff like that. All of that stuff, dude, is being, just being done in a very scummy, scummy way. You know, play to flip and earn and stuff. It's it's not being done in a mutually beneficial way that is good for both the developer and publisher and us as gamers and uh, the consumer. It's just not, dude. It's just not. It's not. Whenever whenever it's being incorporated and, and uh, integrated into the, the games in a way where it's actually something that we can benefit from as well, and it's not just being done in a scummy-ass way where these uh, developers and publishers are trying to, like, rip money away from people, where we get something out of it too, I'll change my tone, dude. But that's not the way it's being done at all, dude. It's really gross. And, uh, I mean, I've, I've been since the like rise of the popularity of of you know the the trends and and you know the hype around all of that crap dude i've been telling people like stay away from it dude you're just gonna get you're gonna be heartbroken over it it's and and how many how many games dude tried to incorporate that kind of bull crap and it was just a big scum fest dude so gross so gross Oh, they are having the state of play tomorrow, dude. What? I actually want to, uh, I want to use this one. I like insider gaming. Uh, 2 p.m. Pacific. Bro, that's four in the afternoon. Yeah. Okay. I will link it for everybody so you can watch it live if you want, but I won't be live tomorrow to watch so we can watch it together. So, um, we'll be recapping it on Thursday. Yeah. Gross. Gross. Xbox testing helpful new console features. Let's see what that is. Gross. EA. Sims 4. Disgusting. Good. They shouldn't turn off skill-based matchmaking. Um, here's the thing with like these types of like online competitive games. They need to give multiple options as far as the types of matches that you can queue up in. 
Um, Skill-based matchmaking needs to be one of them. They need to just have casual matchmaking too. That way, if people just want to hop in matches with whoever, they can do that. You know, there needs to be a variety of, of ways in which people can match up in different matches, you know, together, play modes and stuff. Uh, but but a ranked-based or skill-based or experience-based matchmaking definitely needs to be something in these competitive games. It needs to be in there in some form or fashion so that people that want to play with other people on their skill levels can do that. You know, it doesn't, it needs to be in there in some form or fashion. Don't cheat in games unless it's like a single player game where you're not affecting anybody else. If you cheat in a multiplayer game, you're ruining the experience for everybody else and you're cheating because you're a soft ass gamer. I don't care what you say. You're weak sauce, you suck, and you, you can't take the time to actually learn how to get good so you cheat instead and you suck. Game Pass subscribers say goodbye to one of the best stealth uh, games. Let's see what this is. A lot of the stuff I'm passing, we already have up in, in uh, tabs, so we'll be hitting a lot of this. All right. Let's get in here. What's happening? See that starts back up. It should. Um, let's just hit this real quick. Xbox testing helpful new console feature. The developers at Xbox are testing a new console feature to help improve players' experiences with the Xbox Series X and S consoles. Um, so our bullet points here are Xbox Insider Program players on the beta ring now have new filters and sorts in the My Games and Apps section, allowing for easy searching and sorting of games based on accessibility options, supporting langu languages and technical capabilities. The update also includes the ability to sort the subscription tab by recently added games, making it simpler for players to see the latest updates to the games they follow. Fixes have been implemented in the latest update addressing issues, such as unexpected errors, loading the homepage during sign-in, and the removal of recently added profiles after console restarts. Microsoft encourages players to report any unexpected errors for future updates. Interesting. Okay. Anything that allows people to sort through games, find games easier, that kind of thing, that's great. Um, if you need a deeper look at this, I think, uh, you know, you can probably find it in there. But I think the bullet points really give us the gist of what we need to know out of that. Um, now Xbox Game Pass subscribers say goodbye to one of the best stealth games. <clears throat> Let's see what this is. January 31st is going to be a bad day. So tomorrow for Game Pass subscribers to, that enjoy stealth games, part of the price of having a constantly evolving library of games bolstered with regular new additions, including major releases that launch, is games also on occasion leave. Um, the game in question is hit. Man World of Assassination, which includes not just Hitman 3, but the first two games in the series as well. Um, so it looks like this will be leaving tomorrow. Again, if you're not familiar, 
If you're interested in playing this game, you're a Game Pass subscriber, and you haven't gotten into it yet, you can get a 20% off for purchasing it through Game Pass if interested. Okay? If you need more, I'll link this as well. <coughs> that was kind of weird. Stop it. So there is a state of play from PlayStation happening tomorrow. In a new tweet, PlayStation officially announced that the new state of play will premiere Wednesday, January 31st at 2 p.m. Pacific. That would be 4 o'clock p.m. our time or 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Convert that to the rest of the world, wherever you might be. Um, fans will be able to catch the showcase on YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok. Event will last 40 minutes, covering 15 plus games, including extended looks at Stellar Blade and Rise of the Ronin. Um, PlayStation did not officially confirm some of the other titles rumored to appear. The entire state of play contents appeared to leak earlier this week. However, today's announcement does confirm the state of play will feature Rise of the Ronin. This adds some validity to the previous reports. Also, PlayStation uh, confirmed the runtime today. 40 minutes should provide ample time for a brief glimpse at each of the games in the rumored leaks. What we'll probably do is like... Just rewatch it. We'll probably rewatch it. In between the news and gaming on Thursday, we'll just rewatch the state of play. We'll watch the VOD. Dill Labs has recently claimed that a number of other unannounced titles could appear. A new Dill Labs report earlier today hinted that Concord might finally reveal some gameplay. Concord is a multiplayer first person shooter from Firewalk Studios. It was first announced last year with a cinematic trailer that did not show any characters or gameplay. Dill Labs also claimed that a new Death Stranding 2 announcement is coming soon. State of Play announcement could involve a full title reveal, release window, and PC uh, support. Reportedly, the full title could add the phrase on the beach. PlayStation has not confirmed if until Dawn will make an appearance at the new State of Play either, but it would be an ideal opportunity to announce a new version. Uh, they've been, there's been a lot of talk about <clears throat> until Dawn coming to PC with like a remaster. Um, so we'll see if they announce that. Yeah. All right. Cool. This is kind of weird. <clears throat> a church has appeared to use the Steam logo. A gamer finds Steam's logo in an unlikely spot when they notice a local church's sign using the online store's iconic branding. In a strange twist of events, a church appears to be using the Steam logo as its own branding while driving around town. One gamer couldn't help but notice the hilarious sight as the iconic Steam logo was front and center on a local church's billboard. When it comes to PC gaming, Steam is the go-to platform for many gamers who choose to play this way. As one of the leading online stores for PC titles, Steam has a giant footprint in the world of gaming, and it continues to grow as one of the most popular avenues for many players to purchase games. For many upcoming releases, being featured on Steam's coveted wish list is a great achievement and demonstrates the online store's power and influence in the in <clears throat> excuse me in the industry. However, for one gamer, the influence of Steam appeared somewhere completely unexpected. A recent run-in with their local church's sign caused them to do a double take thanks to the House of Worship's incredibly familiar branding. Random mode time. Get him in there. <laughs> All right, you can win on either a Vislod or. Praise the steam. That's right. That's what I was saying. True. Yo, happy uh, Tuesday. Good morning, by the way. I was saying, yo, it's uh, we 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 now have a gamer a gamer church. You know what I mean? We got a, a gamer a, a church for gamers now. Praise the gamer gods. You know. <laughs> or you can win on Doritos chip. <laughs> well, on a drive, a Reddit user known as uh, Fourth Dimension passed a church that used Steam's logo as its own. At first, the driver couldn't believe it and had to turn their car around just to make sure. However, upon further in inspection, Fourth Dimension finally realized that the church was definitely using the official Steam logo on its sign. For many, the logo represents all the great games available on Steam. But this logo now may mean something completely different to the attendees of New Jerusalem Church. The picture has since been shared on the official Steam subreddit by Fourth, uh, Fourth Dimension. Receiving almost 20,000 upvotes at this time of, of uh, at the time of this writing, comments questioning the uh, legality of the logo's usage have sprung up, while other comments have wondered 
if alerting Steam is actually worth all the, the trouble. This isn't the first time a famous logo in gaming has been used in a strange way, of course. A few years ago, a skincare company used Resident Evil's umbrella logo without realizing the meaning behind the brand. <laughs> Bro, for real? Oh, no way. That's great. But seeing Steam's logo on a church sign is even funnier, funnier due to the sheer randomness. Yeah. As of now, there's no knowledge about whether the church is aware of Steam's logo or not. After Steam had a record year in 2023, there's no mistaking. The online store is more widely known than ever, but it's unlikely the church is aware of this brand's origins. Until more is known about the church's reasoning for choosing Steam's logo, this discovery remains a hilarious mystery. Well, we, we, we gotta pull this up, dude. Oh, no way. Check it out, dude. They straight up ripped it. Like, dude, it's the exact same. That is hilarious. Oh, yo, Reject, what up? Wasn't the research facility that housed the COVID virus also? Uh, oh, dude, did they really? I didn't hear about that either, dude. I don't know. I don't know. Bro, how funny is that? Look at this. <laughs> Dude, this is my kind of church right here. <laughs> Come play games. Come praise the gamer gods, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Could have been a joke. Yeah, reject. Could be for reals too, though. It, it wouldn't surprise me, you know? It wouldn't surprise me. Dude, this is hilarious. <laughs> That's so good. Dude. That's so flippin' funny, man. Yeah, that's my kind that's my kind of religion right there, baby. <laughs> that's that's flippin' great. I'm actually gonna leave this up to go along with this. Uh let's look up this uh this skincare one too. Skincare center uses Resident Evil's umbrella logo. Dude, shut your mouth. When was this? When was this article, dude? 2017, dude. <laughs> no way. <laughs> They're making zombies. They're making zombies in there, dude. <laughs> my god that is too good dude brother i don't want to create an account what the crap dude oh that's too flipping funny dude that is so great oh my god why is this even coming up here this didn't used to happen dude oh that's good though that's flipping funny dog jesus <laughs> I would not walk in there. Dude, I wouldn't be able to help myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, bro, reject. Yeah, dude, don't even trip, brother. It's. I'm sorry it took me so long to get back to you, dude. You know? It's been kind of chaotic for me here recently, man. I've just been a little bit strapped on time. It's been a little bit overwhelming, I'll be honest. Like, I feel I feel a little bit, like, just over-encumbered with, like, things I've got going on and, and trying to keep up with things and stuff, dude. Uh, it's not, it's not like, too bad or anything. It just, I, I, I've got, it's it's been a bit of a time crunch for me here recently. I've had a lot of stuff going on and everything. So, I apologize for not, not getting back to you, man, in a timely manner. I do apologize. I try to be good about that kind of stuff, so... I just, I, I kept trying to say, I didn't forget about you. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good about not forgetting about people needing things from me and everything. I just, it, it's been kind of, kind of wild for me here lately. So, um, <clears throat> don't even trip, dude. Don't even trip. Like I said, I still got some things to figure out on my side about getting a shipping address set up and everything. That's one of the things that's kind of fallen back for me. I almost had, you know, I was working on getting that set up and then uh, there's some other life things that have cropped up that have taken, you know, priority over that so yeah yeah reject reject you know yeah rejects uh requested some stuff from me because he wants to try and make something so that's pretty cool i've got to get this uh i'm gonna try to get this uh 
P.O. box thing set up for us here pretty quick, guys. So I'll try to get that done this week. <clears throat> we'll see how it goes. We've been having a, a lot of, you know, um, one of my my kids is, is just uh, got some uh, extracurricular stuff that has gotten really, really busy, dude. Um, so our evenings are just like, you know, where I, got, I used to get a lot of time in the evenings to work on stuff and address stuff, you know. Um, my One of my kids is just getting really, really busy with extracurricular stuff, so that takes a lot of time right now. And we've got a, a family member that's not doing very well, so uh, there's just a lot of stuff going on with that and everything too, so it's just getting kind of hectic, you know. So um, for there, there's a little bit of, you know, content creation that's fallen by the wayside as well, so I apologize for that, you know. Some of the, the YouTube stuff's falling a little bit behind. and. But I'm trying, man. I'm trying, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. But, you know, this means a lot to me. And you guys mean a lot to me. You know, I try to stay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So she's uh, she's in another big uh, community performance coming up. And so it's like, dude, five to six nights a week. You know, she's got like big long play practices and stuff that, you know, we're helping her attend and be a part of and stuff like that so um yeah yeah it's exciting she loves it you know which is really cool um it's it's cool we live in a place where they've got this amazing like community theater set up for youth and everything so there's a lot of you know engagement she gets there with you know very um like-minded you know peers and stuff and and um uh, you know kids her age and everything like that so it's it's cool man and she loves the uh you know the drama you know not not life drama she likes drama theater drama and stuff like that she loves it you know so um it's it's something very uh, good for her as far as just being able to interact with other kids and and uh enjoy something that she loves already and so it's it's really good but you know whenever she gets into these big performances man they get pretty intense and especially because we had like a week where all that bad weather came in like a week and a half all that weather came in and it canceled a bunch of their it was like the first week where they were supposed to be having um practices so all these practices got canceled because of all this the, it was really because of how cold it got they didn't want people having to get out into that cold you know it got really really cold and so um <clears throat> they canceled a bunch of practices and so uh they're trying to make up for it so the weeks are already kind of packed with how much practicing they do and then they're they're like now they're trying to like push in all the ones that got missed too <laughs> into the 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 uh the weeks uh that came after you know so it's just made it even a little more hectic but it is good she loves it and um you know it's it's amazing to to be able to have her doing that and and help her out with it and stuff so just we go through those like hills and valleys with with life you know it's like sometimes it gets uh super hectic and um it feels like i've got other stuff that falls behind a little bit that i i wish wouldn't but it's just the way it is and then we'll hit those valleys where things calm down a little bit and i'm able to get back to focusing on some of the stuff i i, I need to you know for like the stream and community and content and stuff like that yeah 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 oh yeah reject same thing dude same thing yep yep absolutely dude Oh, for real? Yo, uh, my daughter's doing Nemo right now. <laughs> They're doing Nemo. Yeah, Alice in Wonderland would be dope. That would be really cool. Yeah, Alice in Wonderland would be sick. There would, there's only one role that I would do in Alice in Wonderland, and you know who that would be. Alice. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> you guys are funny dude Richie's like I already knew what was coming bro <laughs> That's funny, dude. <laughs> Mad Hatter, yeah, that that's my favorite character. Actually, I love the Mad Hatter, dude. Mad Hatter's hilarious. 
Uh, I don't think I don't know that I'd be able to dance like that though. You know what I mean? <laughs> what is it? What's it called? Like the Jabberwocky or whatever, dude? <laughs> Flipping dance, <laughs> dance is wild. Let's get back in here, dude. It's good to see everybody. Happy, happy Tuesday. Power World patch notes update version uh, 0.1.1.2 is now out for Xbox, but the PC parody is still far off. Um, so the Xbox version of everyone's new creature collecting obsession has received a new update this week. Here's what it does. If you're a human who has a vague interest in video games, you've almost definitely heard of Power World. Um, so as of today, the Power World patch notes for update version 0.1.1.2 have been revealed for Xbox. Uh, both console and PC versions, right? Oh yeah, I agree, true, I agree, yeah, I think so as well, yeah. As announced in a tweet from the official at Power World, um, Ian, just yesterday, the uh, the version update has been released for both Xbox and Microsoft Microsoft Store PC versions of the game. Interestingly, this means that the update won't apply to Power World's highly popular Steam version, which is already multiple updates ahead of the, the Xbox version, right? Um, so what does this Power World version for Xbox update do? Very little, it turns out. Fix some issues which negatively affected game stability. The post puts it simply. That said, the very brief tweet also made clear Pocket Pair's intention to address problems and glitches pointed out by the community. We will continue to place top priority on fixing major issues. The problem here is they're working on trying to get these versions on the same level, right? The parity going. But the problem is there's this whole certification process for updates on Microsoft's platform that is making it more difficult for them right and uh they're working on trying to get it done though is what what we read so um yeah so in short microsoft's approval approval process is a lot slower than valves that's what they're talking about um pocket pair previously explained its frustration at this disparity uh, between the Steam version being already quite a bit ahead of the Xbox versions, uh, and they have been cited as stating, quote, we're really at the mercy of the certification here. In short, Microsoft's pr approval process is a lot slower than Valve's. So they're trying, man, they're trying. Um, yeah, it's nuts, dude. It's nuts. I mean, you love to see it from an indie company, dude. The thing that you want to see, though, is them stick to being the core of what has made them good so far, right? You don't want to see them blow up and turn into something we've seen all these other big companies turn into, right? Um, <clears throat> I'm sure both versions will be nearly identical eventually, supporting 32 players per server concurrently and so on. Um, yeah. So, uh, they're trying, man. For everybody, just know that you know, these updates for Xbox are coming, they're just coming slow, and it's not really, it doesn't sound like something that's necessarily an issue on the side of Pocket Pair, the developer behind the game, but it's just them trying to deal with the certification process of these updates being able to be pushed out uh, as, in a, regards to Microsoft having to approve them and stuff. So, um, as they probably get more familiar with this process, um, it'll get a little bit easier, a little bit more seamless and more fluid for the game, but <clears throat> you know, it's just going to take some time to get to that point. Uh, yo, yo, I mean, I don't like to be that guy and I never want a game to be bad, but I told you so, I told you so. <laughs> I mean again I'm not always right when it comes to a lot of these games but a lot of the things uh, dude I've been doing uh, paying attention to the gaming industry for a long time just as a an enthusiast and as a, a uh, you know consumer and stuff and um, I'm not always right and I will absolutely eat my words and and I will retract statements and I will uh, tell you know whenever I have been wrong about something uh, I have no problem with that now I'm, I'm easily uh, you know I'm quick to admit whenever I've made a mistake um, 
but quite often whenever I uh, have been paying attention to the development process of a game, um, I see indicators that, that show me that there's enough to be concerned about with a game prior to its release where I start advising people they should just at least wait and see, you know, eight to nine times out of ten, I'm right. And not trying to be, you know, conceited about it or anything. It's not what I want. I mean, it, it's just a fact, you know. I have been wrong as well. Like with Atomic Heart. Atomic Heart, I, 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 I thought there was reason for concern with that game, but it turned out to be pretty decent on release content and performance-wise. And I've... I've told people that I was wrong on that front, you know? Um, but Suicide Squad is one that I've told people, you should be weary of this. You should be hesitant about this. Nobody should be buying this on um, release or pre-order or anything. You should be waiting until reviews come out so you can see what the game's going to uh, be reviewed like before you decide to spend money on this game because the developer doesn't deserve it as far as I'm concerned. With everything I've seen through the development process, too many concerns, too many red flags. And here we are. So, nobody can play it. Nobody can play the game. And this is where we are right now. So the full release hasn't even happened. Right? Full release hasn't happened. Doesn't happen until uh, the second. And uh, this is the... So the only info we have on um, reviews or critiques about... The, uh, the way the game plays is there have been a very, very limited number of outlets that got their hands on an early version of the game before the, the early access even started. And they were even confirming a lot of my notions about the game being very mediocre. And, um, but it was limited, right? And we need a more, uh, we need a larger data set. I say that all the time, you know, a, a review process for games is, is something that is good to go off of, but it's not necessarily always going to be indicative of what your uh, experience is going to be in a game either, right? But the more data you have uh, in a, in a in reviews, the more data you have for that that data set to go off of to give you a baseline to show you uh, what the experience as a whole has been for everybody playing that game is a pretty good indicator of of where you're going to sit in your experience for the game, right? So right now there's very limited, but it has shown a lot of the same things I was worried about. Now, the game released in early access and the servers are balls. It's actually just like people are starting the game and it's going, you already completed this game. You can't play it anymore, <laughs> like stuff like that. You know, so uh, people that bought into these stupid and I, I feel bad for people that get baited into this mechanic. It's terrible. But, you know, the people that bought into the the mechanic of, you know, pay us 30 more dollars for the deluxe edition and you can be a, a what is, a, again, I'll, I'll stick to the same notion, a final beta tester, so you can play the game three days early, right? I told you. All you are is a final beta tester and you can't, I mean, these final, you, you're, you, these people that bought into this, this premise of a, a getting to play the game early, you aren't even able to play the game now. Yeah. And I mean, this happens all the time, whether it be, you know, just a, a bug ridden early access, you know, being able to access the game earlier than, than the base release. You're most of the time, you're just a final beta tester is all it is. And you're paying for it. You're paying for that access. And a substantial amount of money, too, which is asinine. It's really gross. So that brings us into talking about this, right? Suicide Squad Deluxe Edition goes offline after launch due to bug. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League goes offline an hour. An hour after launch following reports of a bug frustrating gamers with early access. The early access launch of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League has been temporarily shut down following reports of a bug that automatically completes the game. According to Video Game Chronicle and Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League's official X, or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, um, developer Rocksteady pulled the plug on the always online Suicide Squad game after going live for about one full hour. 
While the official release of the game isn't until February 2nd, buyers of the $100 US, uh, that's US currency, $100, Deluxe Edition were meant to have 72 hours of early access before the release of the Standard Edition. Again, this is something that has been happening in the um, world of gaming for such a very long time now. And... Um, the 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 what has become so gross about it is that it's literally it 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 does nothing for gamers it's just a hype mechanic for the people that absolutely cannot wait to play this game you can pay us a substantial amount more money to get in here and play three days early when quite often all i mean dude i'm talking most of the time you're just literally being a final beta tester. You're you're helping flesh out the issues the game still has. So that some, you know, real quick patching can be done and stuff to make the game feel a little bit better for all the people that are going to play it on the full release. Because, it, I mean, it, it's just disgusting. You can go back and look at the history of the, the way this stuff works. It, it's all the time. And it, it, the people that buy into this are feeding a terrible, terrible mechanic for the way the, the uh, publishers and developers approach this type of uh, scheme in the industry for, for releasing these products to us. It, in my opinion, does nothing for most people to get in here and play these games early anyways as a game player, right? It's just there's, there's people that for some reason can't deal with waiting three more days to play the, the 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 actual release date they just can't they can't stand the hype you know it's just too much for them it's crazy man however within the early time frame of release owners of the deluxe edition discovered their main story campaign was already completed after logging on to the game for the first time a uh, quote we are aware that a number of players are currently experiencing an issue where Whereby, upon logging into the game for the first time, they have full story completion, the official Suicide Squad game uh, Twitter account said. To resolve this issue, we will be performing maintenance on the game servers. During this time, the game will be unavailable. We expect this to take several hours, and we'll update once we have more information. We apologize for the inconvenience. At the moment, there's no indication of how long Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League will be offline. Unlike the situation with Baldur's Gate 3 on Xbox, there are no holidays that would seriously impact work on patching out the autocomplete bug. That said, owners of the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League Digital, Digital Deluxe Edition are upset that their $100 purchase feels currently worthless after losing one of its pricey perks. In addition to early game access, the Digital Deluxe version also included cosmetics, and one battle pass token. Uh, the latest news is another setback for the polarizing uh, Suicide Squad video game. The anti-villain live service game failed to make a splash during its PlayStation State of Play reveal last year and suffered a major delay afterward. Most of the game's criticism has centered around its questionable execution of the live service format. Yes. Um, I did this. Uh, let me let me bring this up. Let's read this one because I it, it seems like they were taking it down uh, completely. Yeah, hundred dollars. Yeah. Yep. Rocksteady Suicide Squad game launch is quickly taken down. Yeah, so this is another thing, you know, they, um, the early access period uh, has now appeared to have caused Rock City extra grief, uh, as word also spread that publisher Warner Brothers did not provide pre-release review codes to media outlets. There's only one reason why this would happen. 
Publications like IGN ran stories over the weekend noting the publisher has opted not to send out review codes till the game's servers go live, or not at all in the case of IGN, which ran a negative-leaning preview of the game ahead of launch. Polygon also did not receive review code ahead of Suicide Squad's launch. Um, why would they not want review sites reviewing their game? There's only one reason I can think of. The game's balls. And if these big review sites review the game and they put out these reviews about the game and then people read that the game's balls, they don't get sales. I've been telling people not to buy this. I mean... It's a... Uh, <laughs> I think that what you should expect out of this game is heavy monetization coming out of a AAA price tag game. The base edition being $70, right? And then just riddled with monetization. That in and of itself is always going to raise flags for me. Um, then you talk about a game like this being so heavily focused on monetization is is normally going to lead me to believe that they focused too much on how they could squeeze money out of people rather than content, right? And so my inklings on what would be experienced in this game would be um, for the type of genre it is, third person, loot and shoot, kind of uh game you know um live service that kind of thing um with the concerns i already had with with the content being probably subpar you're probably going to run into issues of um the game feeling very repetitive and dry where you're going to be doing the same kinds of quests over and over and over and it's just not going to lead to a whole lot of a, you know, you'll probably get some decent cutscenes and stuff like that where it is Suicide Squad. So there will probably be some decent cutscenes. They'll have some comedy in it, you know, and stuff like that. But as far as gameplay goes, it, it's, it, I'm probably not going to be great, which sucks coming out of a, a uh, company like, you know, Rocksteady, who many people fell in love with because of the Batman Arkham series, stuff like that. You know, to see them struggle in, and I'm guessing WB probably pushed them to do this kind of game more than likely, which sucks too. But, you know, this isn't the company that most people fell in love with anymore. Or, you know, it's, it's, they're being, whether it's an internal thing for themselves or the, the, the WB pushing them to be something completely different, whatever it is, man, this is, this, this is not the same kind of product we got from them in days gone, you know? In, in the Batman Arkham stuff they pushed to us previously that so many people fell in love with. This is something t entirely different. And, and um, there's reason to be concerned. There has been through the development process. There's so much stuff that we heard and, and saw and watched them go through that was like, hey, this is a bad look. You know, I think it's a, a lot of the same thing that so many people buy into nowadays in the, the realm of entertainment where it's like, oh, well, it's got a... Uh, some they've 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 got some kind of IP, you know. They've they've got some, whether it be Star Wars or or something like the Tolkien universe and in, in the Hobbit or, or Lord of the Rings or the Marvel DC universes or whatever. You know, it's an easy thing for these companies to use, whether they own it or you know these companies license it out. To be able to build a game or a piece of entertainment around and you know how many times does that happen where it's not done very well they just build something mediocre around those universes or or those 
personas and and they know people will buy it because people love those characters and those universes and stuff and that sucks to see it really does but i think this is one of those those occasions unfortunately they're like yo let's make a game built around the suicide squad because that's a fairly recent and popular ip and we'll make it live service we'll make it cost triple a price tag then we'll put a bunch of monetization in it as well it'll be easy for us to make a bunch of different characters with a bunch of different cosmetics and and we'll make it live service so people uh will want to be in the game all the time and and they'll want different uh costumes and and you know stuff like that and and uh i don't think they focused much on what the gameplay actually probably was to make it engaging and and really keep people inside the the gameplay experience feels bad but it's not a unique thing to happen in the industry we see it happen all the time all the time you know it's unfortunate i don't recommend buying into this wait at the very least wait and see what reviews say after the full release Celebrate the magic of video games with Day of the Devs' first non-profit fundraising campaign. Interesting. Okay, am I crazy or was that the best that. Day of the Devs ever? Music, so many great games, so much good music. And what a great group of developers. I can't believe how many people came. I think we broke an attendance record. I think I broke an eating record. That's a lot of food trucks. I am just gonna call it. It was the best thing ever in the history of games food? and all human achievement. High fives all around. Uh, that, 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 that. Aren't you guys all forgetting something? Uh, hey, business, Richard. I heard food too. True. No, 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 no. Hold on a second. I'll call you back. I told you to call me Ricky Business Paisan. Okay, listen. I'm just your friendly and highly paid business consultant. Oh, sorry. Forgot you're on this call. Yeah, and you also forgot the most important thing about the Day of the Devs, profits. That is not the point. Once again, this show has failed to generate a single dollar of profit. Rick, that's not what Day of the Devs is about. Yeah, we're here to showcase amazing indie games. And bringing developers and players together. With music, food, and drinks. And it's all free. You're going to give away all that expensive stuff and you don't charge nobody for nothing? How do you expect to pay for the thing if you don't make a profit? No, no, no. The, the costs are covered by sponsors. Oh. We love our sponsors. Oh, the naivete. Look, I give up. If you don't care about making a profit, then you should go register as a non-profit. <laughs> I mean, if you do good as aren't gonna listen to your fancy business consultant, then why do you even have one? <laughs> Wait, scratch that. Forget I said that. You guys thinking what I'm thinking? No! We have amazing news for you all. As of this moment, Day of the Devs is a 100% Look at that little plushie over there, dude. <laughs> being 100% independent, clarifying... This dude only wears Kermit shirts. What the crap? He was wearing another one. Profit helps our donors and sponsors understand how critical their support is for Day of the Devs. All while letting us continue our... <laughs> what the crap? Independent game developer <laughs> Why is he only wearing Kermit shirts? ...spotlighting the greatest innovations and artistic achievements in the medium while giving a voice to emerging and underrepresented talent. Phew. And that means our fundraising efforts will be more public and more transparent, starting right now with the launch of the very first Day of the Devs fundraiser. Putting on a great show like Day of the Devs costs a lot of money for the venue rental and all the equipment. I don't get it. We want to keep Day of the Devs I must be absolutely missing something. free for all developers and players to attend. And you know, the staff and feeding the staff and feeding the developers. We have a lot of fun events planned for 2024, but we can't do it without your support. Security and printing all the signage and shipping. And so please check out our fundraising page and find out how you can support Day of the Devs. Thank Bye. you. Kind of a cute pledge button you know maybe independence is the greatest profit of all <laughs> richard non-profit for the people oh got a good ring to it cool man so day of the devs has gone um non-profit 
Fully independent 501c3 nonprofit has just announced their first fundraising campaign on Fundraise UP, which hopes to spotlight unique video games and the developers who make them. In a new video, which can be viewed above, which we just watched, you can check out multiple Day of the Dev team members as they speak about the fundraiser, along with a fetch appearance by Daniel Fan. Fan. Franzese. Known for his role as Damien in the original Mean Girls film. You can learn more about Day of the Devs fil uh, first fundraising campaign below. Sorry if I butchered his name. I don't really know who that is. Apologies. Um, so. You do though. <laughs> True knows. Um, you can, they've got the link right here for the, the fundraise up stuff. Um, as a nonprofit, which was made possible through a, fi uh, a fiscal f sponsorship partnership with Le uh, Legacy Global, Day of the Devs will make fundraising efforts more transparent and public, help sponsors and the community understand how critical their support truly is, and solidify the commitment to being 100% platform agnostic. R with raised funds, Day of the Devs will support venue fees, equipment, staffing, video production, and overall uh, operating costs. Fans who choose to donate can receive a variety of gifts, including game keys from developers and publishers, Double Fine, I am 8-Bit, Enhanced, Night School, Capybara Games, Sabotage Studio, Tribute Games, and more. Uh, speaking of Capybara, I wonder how Cappy's doing on her trip. Plus VIP tickets to events and physical goods. The, the full list of gifts and tiering details can be found at this link. Um, it's a whole new day of the uh, day for Day of the Devs, it said Tim, Tim Schaefer, co-founder of Day of the Devs. It's extremely gratifying to see how the show became... To see this show become, excuse me, as fully independent as the amazing indie games it has always centered around. That's actually really cool and I think very important, man. As part of the announcement, Day of the Devs also revealed their initial calendar for 2024, which includes Day of the Devs San Francisco in March, Day of the Devs Summer Game Fest edition in June, and Day of the Devs Game Awards edition in December. Yeah. You can read the rest about the events down below, but that's really neat, man. We, uh, we usually watch Day of the Devs in here. It's uh, important, I think, because it is centered around the uh, independent developers in the industry. It, I will say this. In the past couple of years we've watched Day of the Devs, it is so polluted with cozy games. <laughs> Which, there's nothing wrong with cozy games, but it, it almost feels like repetitive in a way. Where it's just like cozy game after cozy game after cozy game after cozy game. It's like, oh my god, dude. But, you know, supporting indie developers is very, very important. Um, I, I say this quite often. I, I do think that the indie developers in the industry are really the ones that are able to bring forward a lot of the more unique vision and fulfill that vision in what they bring to the table in their their software right they they are able to um not have a lot of other hands into the uh development process if you will that, that can water down the experience of what they have as these unique visions for for what they bring to us as a gameplay experience and um they set the standards quite often for uh what amazing you know pieces of software gaming software we get to to experience in the uh industry and um i think it's a great thing we we, we need to support you know indie devs to the greatest extent possible and so uh highly recommend uh everybody take a look at at the uh you know potential of of what the day of the devs is and and what they're doing there and in, in promoting indie developers man it's awesome the original dragon quest builders is finally coming to pc next month for anybody that wants to be involved with that uh what did the uh feature upgraded crafting features and content introduced with the 2022's mobile release okay that's what i was wondering square enix will finally release the original Dragon Quest Builders for PC next month. The sandbox construction game is now available to pre-order on Steam priced at $28 US or £22 ahead of its release on February 13th. Uh, Dragon Quest Builders was originally released for PS3, PS4, and PS Vita in 2016 before making its way to the Switch in 2018 and to mobile devices in 2022. It is an immersive sandbox gaming experience that invites builders to rebuild the ruined realm of Alfgard. Uh, gathering materials and crafting unique items with endless possibilities, according to its publisher. Well received by critics, earning scores of 83 and 81 um, on Metacritic. 
Steam version will include upgraded crafting features and Terra Incognita. The content that was originally added in 2022 to the mobile version, where builders can freely craft and play now with nearly double the height of blocks that can be stacked on their creations. Cool. So uh, if you're interested, just know that... Uh, Next month on February 13th, this will be hitting PC. All right. New Nintendo 64 inspired game is free for everyone. A new Nintendo 64 inspired game has been released and it's free for everyone. Uh, N64 is the favorite console of many Nintendo fans. It was during this era that we saw the monumental jump from 2D to 3D games. That said, a lot of the games from this era do not hold up as many teams were just beginning to make 3D games, which means they hadn't mastered the formula yet. Some still haven't. Thanks to lots of nostalgia through uh, though modern versions of the games that define this era, the 3D platformer have made a return over the years. The latest is Celeste 64, Fragments of the Mountain, a, a new free download to celebrate the six-year anniversary of hit game Celeste. Um, as for whether the new N64-inspired free follow-up is as... Uh, good as the original Celeste, which is notably a banger. We don't know. What we do know is that uh, it was made in one week, so it is presumably not as complex or ambitious. Further, it's not going to be as polished, which explains why numerous players have already begun to report freezing and crashing issues. If this doesn't deter you, you can download the game for free on itch.io. Right now, this is the only platform and storefront the game can be downloaded. I said Maddie and Makes Games has noted a Mac version is in the works. There's no word of console versions, which seems unlikely at this point. We jamming. Celeste 64. Interesting. <laughs> That's awesome. Pretty cool. So, um... There's an update as of six hours ago that uh, has fixed some errors and stuff. So if you're interested, you can go grab this. Fan favorite game removed from Steam with no warning. A fan favorite game from over a decade ago has been removed from Steam without any warning and without any communication from its publisher. Um, the game in question not only got no forewarning there's no issues of servers or licenses that would tank the game whatever the reason you can no longer buy spec ops the line from steam released in 2012 by jaeger development and publisher 2k the third person shooter was unfortunately deemed a commercial failure by the latter and has never been seen since that said the game is a bona fide cult, cult classic and a favorite of many third person shooter fans for primarily its unique campaign its removal has caught many by surprise including its director Corey davis who is no longer with either company above and thus, to be fair, would not be in the loop on anything involving the game. At the moment, the most likely explanation is some type of re-release remaster is in the works. Thus, 2K wants to remove the original from digital storefronts in preparation of this. We have seen this happen in the past with multiple publishers. That said, it's only been removed from Steam so far, so this explanation isn't quite sufficient unless this situation changes. For what it's worth, no rumors or leaks indicating anything is happening with uh, the game itself. Huh. Well, we'll have to pay attention and see what happens with that. Yeah. And last, but absolutely not least, the terrible, terrible, terrible company of Embracer being that gaming company here we go again so the uh new deus x game that uh has reportedly been canceled by that gaming company um if there was a single company in the gaming industry right now that would be that gaming company I think most people that pay a 
any amount of attention to what is going on in this industry right now and has been for, you know, over the past year, um, would be able to, uh, pinpoint Embracer as being that gaming company, uh, a company that is constantly shuttering its, uh, subsidiaries doors, um, firing people, shutting down games. Uh, it's a bad look. And, uh, while there have been many, many companies that have, you know, are guilty of, uh, being in, in this, this same predicament, uh, none, I don't think any have been, uh, going to the same extremes or lengths that Embracer has with, uh, firing people, laying, you know, getting rid of, of, uh, just totally dissolving subsidiaries, uh, things of that nature. And it, it's almost always easy to just, if, if, if they're not going to be called out by name, you can usually just assume it's Embracer. It's pretty easy. Um, Swedish holdings company Embracer Group has seemingly canceled an in-development Deus Ex game at Eidos Montreal. The thing that sucks is that while I've never really taken a dive into the Deus Ex games, um, there's a huge fan base for these. Huge fan base for the Deus Ex games. And um, there hasn't been a Deus Ex game for quite some time. What, late 2000s? Maybe early 20 teens? But I think late 2000s. Um, embattled gaming company Embracer Group has canceled an in-development Deus Ex game that Eidos Montreal was working on, according to a new report from Bloomberg. If you don't recall, I have to talk about this all the time, but not everybody's aware of this situation. Um, at the beginning of last year, Embracer actually purchased... Was it end of 2022, beginning of 2023, somewhere or that time frame? Embracer actually purchased the North American Development Studios uh, out from underneath Square Enix. Uh, I think they were all Canadian studios, actually. There's about four of them. They purchased all of these development studios, with Eidos Montreal being one of them. Um, and along with that, they got the IPs of Thief. Deus Ex and uh, Tomb Raider. And so um, they purchased all of that for roughly $300 million US, which for most of us seems like a lot amount of money, you know, a, a, a large amount of money. But really for a... Uh, the gaming industry as a whole, it, it seemed kind of minimal at the time and then to be fair they also turned around and just sold the the licensing rights of uh tomb raider to amazon for 600 million so they doubled their investment on just one single property out of what they got from square enix turned it around and sold it for double what they purchased in the first place so uh it was not a bad business decision um but Things have led, apparently, to them um, feeling like they're, you know, they put a lot of their eggs in the basket of the Savvy Games Group deal, which is basically them trying to get in bed with the uh, Saudi Arabian regime and government. Savvy Games Group is the front for the Saudi Arabian government, and um, they had a deal that was about to go through with the Savvy Games Group for roughly $2 billion. Billion, billion with a B. And it fell through, and ever since, uh, Embracer has just been tumbling downwards. They've been uh, firing mass amounts of employees, shuttering the doors of their subsidiaries, you name it. It's been uh, brutal to watch, and, um, you know, obviously the people that made these business decisions are not the ones that are paying the price, it's the people at the bottom, right? The subsidiaries and stuff like that. It's unfortunate, but this is the, uh, this is the case. So, um... The untitled and unannounced RPG was reportedly in pre-production for two years, was set to enter production later this year. An anonymous source told Bloomberg, the last Deus Ex game was 2016. Oh, it was 2016. Deus Ex Mankind Divided. That was a little bit more recent than what I thought it was. The cancellation comes not long after the Swedish conglomerate snatched up a bunch of publishers and studios failed to secure a $2 billion deal like I just talked about with Savvy, Savvy Games Group and subsequently laid off nearly 5% of its workforce. And according to Bloomberg, more layoffs could be hitting Eidos in the wake of Deus Ex game cancellation. Um, 
Embracer has spent the last few years gobbling up studios like um, the fattest hippopotamus in a game of hungry, hungry hippos. In 2021, it became Europe's most valuable video game developer after it announced nearly 30 takeovers within a year, growing from a relative unknown into a massive monolith in a short span of time. It brought Borderlands develop it bought, excuse me, Borderlands developer Gearbox, who they've now been trying to sell off and have also fired employees underneath. Uh, in February of 2021, Star Wars remaster company Aspire Media in April of 2021, 3D Realms and Ghost Ship Games in August of 2021, Crystal Dynamics, Idos Montreal, and Square Enix Montreal in May of 2022, uh, the rights to the Lord of the Rings franchise in August of 2022, which was, uh, I think, over a billion dollars. Since then, the studio has been a poster child for what happens when you rapidly grow, buy up, and then consolidate other companies and ultimately fail to secure a $2 billion partnership with Saudi Arabia's Public Investment Fund. Like I was saying, their front, Saudi Arabia's Public Investment Fund, the front for that is called Savvy Games Group. In other words, late stage capitalism. Yep. Square Enix Montreal was previous, uh, briefly rebranded to Onuma before being completely shut down in November of 2022. Saints Row v uh, Studio Volition was closed in August of 2023. We're talking about a 30-year uh, running developer in Volition. They started off as a company called Parallax, um, made games like Descent and Red Faction way back in the day, and were more recently known uh, for making the Saints Row games and were called Volition, but they're completely done now. They are dissolved because of Embracer. Um, Embracer announced a restructuring in November of the same year, confirming the company laid off about 5% of its workforce since the beginning of 2023 and seemingly canceled 15 projects, many of which were unannounced. For me personally, uh, this is a quote, for me personally, it is crucial that the restructuring program is carried out with compassion, respect, and integrity. Embracer CEO Lars Wingfors wrote in the November 2023 press release. A post from Eidos Montreal's official X and Twitter account confirmed 97 people were laid off in the wake of this decision. Gross, dude. Gross! Why did... Yeah, there we go. So... I mean... It's just... Another day of video gaming news and another day of us talking about more industry layoffs, you know, and, you know, we are already, we're not even a month into 2024 yet, and we've already, uh, you know, surpassed half as many layoffs as we even had last year in 2023. 2023 was brutal brutal we i mean especially the last half of the year last year we literally could not get through a, a, a hardly any video excuse me video gaming news segments um every day without at least hitting some company being shut down or you know mass layoffs or something and and this year is just i mean we, we even talked the, the end of last year about how much we we were hoping that this wouldn't spill over into 2024 and oh my god it's been absolutely disgusting so so bad the you know we're we're already over well over 5,000 job loss in the gaming industry it's not just tech but this isn't specifically tech it's gaming over 5,000 layoffs already this year in gaming well over well over and that's well you know that's over half of of what we even saw last year and we thought last year was brutal this year is stacking up to be um very very dark very dark for employment in the video gaming industry and dude i've talked about it over and over and over um it's weird it's a weird look i sorry but this isn't just a a you can't chalk most of this up to hiring bloat because of the pandemic it just you can't do it Whenever the industry is is gear over end still more profitable, you've got companies like you know PlayStation saying you know we're having another record breaking year at the end of last year, but they're making you know their best first party studios fire people. It doesn't make sense. None of it makes sense. You know, so I think a lot of it's bad business decisions, and the people that pay the price for that are the uh, 
lower level to mid level employees of these companies and the the uh you know big men on the totem pole big big people on the totem pole whatever they sit up there and they still just uh stuff their pockets with gold you know and it's it's uh it's a weird look it doesn't feel good it's it's very daunting and um it's got to stop somewhere man but it sucks to read every single day it really does um that's the news my dudes and dudesettes it's a tough one to end on right there i'm sorry but you know it's it doesn't feel like it's ever gonna stop man it doesn't feel like it's ever gonna stop it just keeps getting worse and worse i don't know what to say man um you guys rock thanks great news segment um flipping rock steady and and suicide squad jesus <laughs> I mean, called it i guess you know i don't know i hate i hate to even have to say that um Sucks the industry so so uh, full of the same kind of you know for, for it for it to be so easy of a thing to call you know that's what sucks. The thing that sucks is that you know it should be um, a surprise for something like this to happen. You know for for the uh, it should be a surprise. It, it should be. Uh, It should be common for games to be good. It should be common for games to be good, to be flawless on release, to, you know what I mean, to be fleshed out, and and it's not. It's the opposite. It's 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 easier to call out when games are going to be a mess. It really is. And um, I'm telling you, man. I mean, we've been doing this for a while. We we watch these games through development, and nine times out of ten, really, I mean, you see a lot of these issues and these these red flags and in many different ways through the development process of these games, it gets really, really easy to call these games out for what they're going to be on release. I think suicide squads, one that I've been very vocal about and you know, people are starting to feel that, that feel baited, you know, people are starting to feel baited and I hate to be the, I told you so, but I did, <laughs> you know, it sucks that this is the industry that we're immersed in and, and you know, but this, these companies are, are, dude, they've made us be this way. They've, they've made us uh, jaded by doing this to us so many times in the past. And, and uh, I've become hypersensitive to so many of these, these indicators now. And, and I don't want other people dealing with the same thing, which is why I, you know, I try to advise people to be very careful about certain products and, you know, Suicide Squad was definitely one that was on my radar for people to be careful about. Hopefully there were some people that, that heeded advice, whether it be from me or anybody else out there that saw through the, the, the charade, you know, of, of what the game was going to be. And, and uh, again, we don't have the full release yet. There's still time to see whether the game will be anything decent at all, but I don't have a lot of hopes for it. I don't know. Um, you guys rock. We're going to go play games, man. Let's go play some Pal World. So uh, if anybody's been hanging out, you're not familiar with what we do, this is our jam, man. We start off every single day, six days a week. Uh, we're only off on Wednesdays. Wednesdays are our normal day off from streaming. So like tomorrow, we will not be live. But every other day of the week, we are live. We start at roughly 6 a.m. CST CDT. We always begin with video gaming news, trying to stay current on what's happening in the industry as a whole. Um, promote a healthier industry for us as video gaming enthusiasts and the consumers of these products. And uh, then we go play games for the rest of the day. So if you're digging this, whether you're watching it live or as a, a VOD later on, um, then you know come be a part of what we do when we are live. Uh, we're always looking for more people to be a part of what we do, spreading good vibes, uh, having fun playing games, enjoying the, the, uh, the world of video games, which we all love around here so very much. And, and just trying to cultivate a community centered around, um, being welcoming and, uh, civil about things, void attack, toxicity and negativity and, and just, uh, lifting each other up, man, and, and presenting a welcoming community for everybody to be a part of while we're, we're here and hanging out together. So if you can dig that, come be a part of it. Uh, if you're interested, we've got most of our previous content out there on the Twitch channel and the YouTube channel in playlists. So whether it be video gaming news, uh, segments we've done playthroughs, we've completed, 
uh, of video games, funny clips and highlights, all that kind of stuff's out there. So go check it out. Other than that, man, uh, happy Tuesday. Hope everybody's week is going well so far. Um, keep on grinding. Weekend will be here before you know it. All right. But uh, stay healthy, stay safe, be kind. And uh, we'll catch everybody for the next video gaming news segment on Thursday. Yeah, when we uh, are back for the beginning of February. But uh, I'm not going anywhere. Stream's not going going down. I'm just going to run us an outro real quick to kind of sum up this news segment. And as soon as that's over, um, we'll get started with playing more Power World. Cool. You guys rock. Be right back. <laughs>